Next on Valley News Live at 10, a local man prepping for the Iditarod, and there's a unique reason behind it. Hear from Minnesota children currently enrolled in COVID vaccine trials. Plus, the CDC releases its long-awaited guidance on reopening schools. Valley News Live at 10 starts right now. This is Valley News Live at 10. Before you complain too much about our weather, at least it's not what they're dealing with in the central part of Russia. It's not only cold there, but they have record-breaking snowfall that has crippled traffic in Moscow. And there's no respite throughout this weekend. Now that sounds like here, right? Where we continue to deal with double digit below zero temps. As we've said all week, these conditions are dangerous, so please take care. And let's go to our chief meteorologist, Hutch Johnson, for the very latest on what's happening right now. Hutch? Mike, the headline really is the fact that uh, many areas are going to see the coldest air of the season as we go through the weekend. So we are going through the uh, brunt of this next Arctic slap together here as we head into the weekend. Wind chill warnings continue for all the areas that you see in pink and those warnings mean that our wind chills could get cold enough to cause frostbite in less than 10 minutes as we go through the overnight and into your early hours tomorrow. Right now, a glance at those wind chill values between single digits below in Sisseton, where the wind is not much of a factor to the Devil's Lake Basin. And look at this, where you see the blackish colors, 35 to 50 below. Rolla right now, the big winner, if you can call it that, with a 48 below wind chill index right now. Now, our cold air has dove all the way into the central plains and southern plains. The white line that you see down in Texas is the freezing line. Dallas is at 25 degrees, Mike, and for them, that's mighty cold. Now, again, the coldest air for many of us this weekend. I'll have hour by hour details on that. We'll talk wind chill and we'll talk about light at the end of the tunnel in the form of some warmer air heading this way finally in a few moments. That sounds great. Thanks. New at 10 tonight, a local man is gearing up for one of the top sled dog races in the world. He's less than a month out from the annual Alaska Iditarod, and for him, it's much more than just a race. Valley News Team's Courtney Lockie explains. We are running down the Yetna River to Squitna. It is about one in the afternoon. It's a beautiful day. For the past six months, each day looks a lot like this for Gunnar Johnson. The Fargo native is braving the Alaskan wilderness, preparing to race in his third and final Iditarod. I'm going to do it one more time. This time, I'm hoping to do it right. The 1,000-mile annual dog race kicks off the first week of March in Anchorage. Gunnar's first race lasted 22 days, his second 10. This time around, his goal goes beyond how fast he can cross the finish line, Instead, it's about who he's racing for. I have a, a cousin, Benjamin, that 10 years ago died by suicide. What I've learned from that experience is how incredibly traumatic and devastating it can be to the family. He's racing not only for Benjamin, but for anyone who's lost a loved one to suicide. Gunner is asking you to send him the names of loved ones you've lost. The team is gonna be me and 14 dogs and these names. He's planning to carry them with him throughout the entire race. At the end of the race, we're gonna take that list and we're gonna have a ceremony and we're gonna go to the start of the historic Iditarod Trail. We're gonna burn that, that list in my cooker and then we're gonna spread the ashes into the Pacific Ocean. Remembering those who've died by suicide and healing those who are left behind. If you have a name that you'd like Gunner to carry during the race, you can send him an email. We have the address attached to this story. You have to visit our website or download the VNL News app. The CDC says it's giving schools a new roadmap for how to reopen safely. The agency released new guidelines which focus on five key strategies. Universal and correct usage of masks along with physical distancing, hand washing, and cleaning and ventilation in school buildings. The guidelines also include contact tracing, isolation, and quarantining. Vaccinations and testing are only described as additional layers of COVID, preve COVID prevention in schools. The CDC says the guidelines are a blueprint, but schools are not required to reopen at this time. Before new medications hit the market, adults are almost always researched before children, and there's no different with the COVID vaccine. So how are kids tested and when might they get the vaccine? Reporter Heather Bell talked with the only group in Minnesota conducting COVID vaccine trials in children. 
For this COVID vaccine trial, how are the participants doing? So far, the, everyone's doing great. Maybe some arm soreness, maybe some redness, occasional fever, everything what we would expect so far. Since December, a number of teenagers Hundreds. have been given Moderna's COVID vaccine. For every three people they participate in a study, two of them get the vaccine. So one gets the placebo. At this medical office in Minneapolis. We've done over a thousand trials in allergy and asthma. And I've really never seen uh, so much interest in any of the trials that we've done. Dr. Gary Berman runs the Clinical Research Institute. A parent can't just sign you up. The, the child actually has to agree. Child has to agree. Right now, Moderna's vaccine is authorized for people 18 and older. Its trial for 12 to 18 year olds has 3,000 participants. Pfizer's vaccine is authorized for people 16 and older. It's currently testing 2,300 12 to 15 year olds. Hopefully we'll have um, some data in the next couple of months. Dr. Kalser Talat runs vaccine trials at Johns Hopkins. She expects the drug companies to submit their applications for teenagers to the FDA. Likely to be later this spring. But says it's important to remember. Until the vaccine is much more widely available, until the adult priority groups or the high risk groups have been vaccinated, um, it's probably not going to, we're not going to be vaccinating a lot of teenagers. My kids are 14 and 17 and they are waiting with bated breath to get a uh, vaccine. It could be that teenagers get the vaccine before school starts up in the fall. If we have enough vaccine, that would be wonderful. Trials for 5 to 11 year olds are expected to start next. Dr. Talat thinks we'll see that data in the late fall. It's possible that the young children may not get the vaccine until next year. Will the little kids get the same dose as an adult would? Probably not, but that, that hasn't been determined yet. That's part of what the next study will be all about. Research is a process. Dr. Berman is also in talks with Moderna to run a vaccine trial for five to 11 year olds. Minnesota's governor is relaxing new COVID restrictions. Starting tomorrow, capacity at bars, restaurants, and indoor entertainment venues will rise to 250 people. Up to 50 people will be allowed at private events. Governor Tim Walz's order doesn't change the limit on capacity by percentage. That means bars and restaurants still can't go over 50% capacity, and the limit for indoor entertainment venues stays at 25 percent. Veterans enrolled in VA health care are now eligible to get the COVID vaccine, but there's a catch. It's only available to those who can schedule their appointment for tomorrow or Monday. Veterans must be enrolled in VA health care in order to get the COVID vaccine through the VA. To schedule, call the Fargo VA at 701-239-3700 and select option two. Dr. Anthony Fauci says that anyone who wants a COVID vaccine should be able to get one by April. So today we asked local health care providers, which for the most part agreed. Health officials in Grand Forks and Fargo say that they have the manpower to make it happen. They just don't have enough doses, which have been promised by the government. Meanwhile, in Clay County, public health is still working on vaccinating people in phase 1A. They called Dr. Fauci's April goal aggressive. To stay on top of the latest vaccine news, check out our VNL News vaccine tracker. Just open your phone camera and point it to the QR code on your screen, then tap the link that pops up. We also have the link on our homepage. The World Health Organization's chief says the team who traveled to China looking for the origins of the COVID-19 pandemic will publish its findings next week. This visit took months to negotiate after China only agreed to it amid massive international pressure. So far, the team has only said that the virus most likely appeared in humans after jumping from an animal. Help could be on the way to address the nursing shortage in the state of North Dakota. A bill proposed before the state Senate would establish a statewide nurse staffing clearinghouse. The goal is to recruit unemployed or underemployed nurses as well as target and hire recent grads. According to the North Dakota Center for Nursing, about a fifth of LPNs and 16% of RNs are working in part-time positions. A good number of our, our nurses are unemployed. A lot of them are working part-time jobs. We also certainly working more with those populations to try to get them more fully employed. The bill already made it past the Senate and is making its way to the Appropriations Committee. Students at the University of Minnesota's five campuses will soon be able to attend college for free if their families earn less than $50,000 per year. 
The university's Board of Regents unanimously approved the creation of the tuition-free program today. They're hoping to have it in place by this fall, saying it could benefit as many as 2,800 students every year. Expect to vote this weekend on the second impeachment of former President Donald Trump. Today, President, former President Trump's defense took about three hours to present its case, followed by a brief question and answer session from U.S. Senators. The former president is expected to be acquitted as Democrats are unlikely to find 17 Republican senators to join in the conviction. The trial resumes tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock with a final vote that could come somewhere around mid-afternoon. Stay ahead tonight for our extreme temperatures this winter have stopped anglers from ice fishing. The new warning from North Dakota's Game and Fish. Temperatures are extremely cold for many of us. We are going to be going into our eighth full day of sub-zero weather. We'll tell you how long it lasts and we'll talk about that warm-up we're eyeballing coming up right after this.